We all know that in the present times, India's political discourse is extremely polarized. Yet there is one particular word which really annoys me. And in today's episode, we are going to talk about what word that is and also about the reasons why it shouldn't have been allowed in the first place to be used in such a huge extent in the way that it is being used. Namaste to all of you all. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Anvi and as always, I'm very happy that you've joined me here. Please don't forget to like, share and subscribe to my channel. And of course, press the notification icon so that you don't miss out on any of my future videos. We rarely see conversations and discussions which bring about an all-encompassed view, an empathetic view, rather than a very biased political view. So in India's context, everybody who supports the BJP government the current government, Modi's supporters, are automatically termed as people who are the Bhakts. Now, what does a Bhakt mean in today's political discourse? Someone who is not capable of critical thinking, someone who is not intellectual, someone who is not empathetic, and someone who is not capable of uh, using their intellect and their emotions to understand things, to comprehend things. Now, all those who are not BJP supporters, who are not Modi supporters, are automatically termed as people who are very intellectual, very much critical, very capable of empathy and of critical points of view. Now, this particular word, the Bhakt, is what really, really gets to me and I am truly surprised that it has been allowed to be used and the extent that it is being used today. Now, the word Bhakt comes from the Hindu faith. It basically means a devotee, a devotee of God. So when you're using this term to define people, to describe people who support the Modi government, who support Modi, not only are you incorrectly appropriating this term, but you are also minimizing the value that the term Bhakt holds in the Hindu faith. Now, secondly, though this term is used, it is not used in a very flattering manner, right? So, as I mentioned below, those who are the Bhakts are supposed to be people who are incapable of critical thinking, who are illogical, who are just blind followers and whatever other negative adjectives you may use for it, it'll apply to the Bhakt. So, the term might have been used as a kind of convenience in conversation to define Modi supporters or BJP supporters. But as I mentioned below, this term has very huge value in the Hindu faith and the Hindu culture. So when you think of Bhakt in the original connotation in Hindu faith, uh, you think of Shabari, you know, the devotee of Lord Rama who was waiting for him and when he visited her, she tasted the berries before offering it to him. You know, these stories tell us about the value that the Bhakti tradition has in our culture, the importance of Bhakti in attaining salvation and reaching God and the importance and the value of a Bhakt himself or herself in society and in our culture. You can also think of Bhakt Prahalad and his story. You can also think of the Bhakti of Mirabai. The examples are endless and they are such significant characters, such significant stories, such significant uh, morals which are being taught to us through their stories and through their life values that when you appropriate that term, to, for somebody who supports a political party and that too in a demeaning manner you are indirectly insulting the Hindu faith itself and lastly I would like to also talk about the examples which show us very clearly as to how this term is used as a political tool to demean Hindu culture and Hindu faith a lot of people troll BJP supporters and Modi supporters with images of them being dressed in saffron of them being depicted as sadhus. So then the question arises, how is this not insulting the Hindu faith and its saints and its upholders? How is being a saint taken to be an insult and how is it accepted? How is it that a saffron clad seeker becomes a symbol of insult and it automatically means that you are intellectually weak? I personally don't think that these words and these terms should be taken lightly. 
their usage should be questioned and it's high time that we stand up against these kinds of usages and I know that a lot of people also take a lot of pride in calling themselves the Bhakts. They very proudly declare that yes, I am the Bhakt of God, I am the Bhakt of Modi or whatever it is, which I guess probably at least personally is not the right way to tackle this because you know the assault is not just on a person who is a political party supporter but rather on a very important term on a very important aspect of the hindu culture now when it comes to the right wing or the bjp supporters or, or the bhakts we do not use any connotations any verbs any words which relate to any other particular faith to demean someone else you know right we don't use any such words to demean a person of the opposing uh, political party or the opposing viewpoint so at the same way i don't think we should allow these words to be used first of all in the wrong context in a demeaning context and we should take a stand against this lastly i would also like to mention that the more these terms are used the more they become common in day-to-day -day language the more they kind of start gaining their own new definition they lose their older their original uh, definition and what they stood for they start gaining new definitions uh, new connotations which kind of start overlapping symbolisms are born like this symbolisms start overlapping um, and narratives start overlapping i'd like to give an example of what happened at the capitol on the usa uh, a few weeks back uh, you all must already know that a person with an Indian flag seen in one of the photographs and um, the comments literally said, what is a Bhakt doing there? So now, <laughs> who it's gone one step further, where anybody who even upholds an Indian flag, the nation's flag, is automatically assumed to be a Bhakt. So what does that mean? A person who loves his country, who stands for his country, now I'm not going to either agree or disagree with the person at the capital i'm not talking about that incident on its own at all i'm just using that as an example of um, how things are perceived and how things can overlap so if you stand up for your country you're a bhakt if you're a modi supporter you're a bhakt if you're a bjp party supporter you're a bhakt so where does this end it is these kind of automatic assumptions which we all really need to be worried about and as I said before we allow the original definitions, the original meaning of a particular term or a word to be lost completely, to be completely diluted in contemporary rhetoric which has absolutely no connection whatsoever to what it is referring to or what it is appropriating, we need to take a stand and probably make our political discourse a little bit more sophisticated, a little bit more empathetic and a little bit more intellectual in the right sense. Uh, this is also one of the ways in which narratives are formed, narratives are built, narratives are normalized and narratives are also justified. So before it is too late, let's all stand up against it. Let me know in the comments below what your thoughts are regarding this and what are the other words and terms which you find problematic in our current political discussions. Until next time, take care.